We're flashing back into the past for a look at the psychedelic Rolls Royce that became the most expensive car in the world. If you like topical stories about the world of rock, folk, and pop music, hit that subscribe button. And we'll figure out what we need to know. In 1964, John Lennon didn't know how to drive and did not possess a driver's license. His heart, however, was set on buying a Rolls Royce Phantom 5. He wanted it all black, including the radiator grill. But Rolls Royce said their grills came only in silver, so he went ahead and ordered that, complete with an 8-track tape audio system, TV, and an electric telephone. In 1967, while the Beatles were putting the finishing touches on the Sgt. Pepper album, John was creating a unique gift for the fourth birthday of his son Julian. It was a 12-foot tall gypsy caravan painted in the colorful style of Romani floral art. The caravan was only seen in public once as it was being driven to the Lennon home in Surrey, and it lived the next 20 years first in John's back garden and then at Ringo's place, sitting beside his swimming pool. The look of the caravan, however, inspired John to commission a paint job for his car, thus creating the legendary psychedelic Rolls Royce with its bright Romani-inspired floral design. He then converted the back seat into a bed and added speakers to the wheel wells connected to a microphone inside. When John Lennon and Yoko Ono relocated to New York in 1970, they took the car with them and often loaned it out to visiting rock stars like the Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, and the Moody Blues. Soon, however, they ran into some tax problems, so they donated the car to the Cooper Hewitt Museum of Design, which was its home until 1985, when a Canadian businessman named Jim Pattison entered the picture. He wanted to display the car at his Ripley's Believe It or Not museums and at Expo 86 in Vancouver, so he purchased it for $2.3 million, setting the world's record for most expensive car ever bought. Afterwards, he donated it to the Royal BC Museum, who loans it out for special events, which was how it made its way to London for the 50th anniversary of the release of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. If you like topical stories about the world of rock, folk, and pop music, hit that subscribe button. The things you think you'd like to know Are the same old things I need to know You and I are good as gold and we'll figure out what we need to know.